Hi everyone, Celine from Blue Calla Patterns here and welcome to video four for the Bellflower backpack. Um, just going back to where we left off in video three, I've sewn the uh, exterior and the front panel to my gusset and I just wanted to uh, give a little bit of extra tips on uh, when you're sewing these panels together. Now, if you're like me and you just use regular thread for your assembly, but you're worried about the strength of your seams, um, I don't know if you can see here, but what I do when I'm sewing my exterior pieces together is that I will sometimes sew two, and this depends on the size of the bag. Uh, obviously, bigger bags, you'll, you tend to carry more things, which makes it heavier. Um, I like to reinforce my seams by actually sewing uh, twice and you'll see it's about, they're spaced about one eighth of an inch um, apart. So it's just to make your seams a little bit stronger, especially when um, areas where you're sewing straps into the seam, it, it's helpful to make your strap stronger. Now in this ca the case of this bag, it doesn't really matter as much because the, these bottom connectors were actually sewn onto the uh, the back panel of the bag. Uh, but anyways, um, this is what I do to make my seams stronger. And make sure you don't sew those too close together because if you're sewing them too close together, then you're probably uh, making the seam weaker, not stronger. So you just need to trim your seam allowance and sorry to make you go through watching me do this, it's awfully boring. So you're going to do this for both of the seams and I'm cutting about, uh, I'm leaving about one eighth of an inch um, seam allowance from the, the, the second seam that I did. Now I'm gonna, not going to show you trimming the other one because that is painfully boring. Um, but I just wanted to show you the bag turned right side out. I'll turn it back after and trim the second seam. But I just wanted to turn it out so you can see the bag so far. And then there you go. So obviously the bag is empty so the flap is not fitting as well, but this is what we have so far in the view from the back. So I will finish trimming that a bit later. Um, so for the, the, the rest of this video, we're actually going to be assembling the, uh, the lining pieces for our bag. So we're going to complete the entire lining assembly. Um, what we'll start with is the slip pocket because that's fairly straightforward. And just as a, a refresher, we cut these slip pocket pieces using the exterior lower panel pattern piece, which we, we folded at the slip po pocket fold line. And we cut two pieces of lining and we interface them. So you're just going to take these two lining pieces And you're just going to pin them right sides together. I got my light here. Okay, so you just pin them right sides together along this top straight edge. They'll pin. Okay, and then I'll go over to my machine and I'm going to sew along the top edge. And then um, if you remember when I showed you for the exterior slip pocket, once you've sewn this seam, I actually press this seam allowance open before I flip the, pad the, the panels uh, wrong sides together and then I press it again, uh, the, top, the top seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this together now. All right, so the slip pocket pieces are sewn together. And like I mentioned previously, I start by 
pressing the seam allowance open. And then I flip the wrong sides together. And press the seam allowance again. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to top stitch along the top edge. Okay, the top edge is top stitched and now I'm going to just place the slip pocket over one of my lining panel. And I'm going to go over to my machine. I'm just going to baste it in place around all of the edges here before I, sp I separate it into two separate pockets. Okay, the slip pocket is now sewn to the lining panel and I want to divide this into two separate slip pockets. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this lining panel in half vertically, wrong sides together. And then I just want to make a mark at the top and the bottom edge of the pocket. And then I'm going to go over to my machine and I will start sewing from the bottom center mark all the way to the top and then I'm going to backstitch at the top here and then I'll have two separate slip pockets. All right, so I have two separate slip pockets. I'm just going to set this lining panel aside for now. Um, before we assemble the second lining panel, let's just quickly um, sew our lining gusset pieces together. So you're going to do this exactly as you did for the exterior gusset pieces. And you're just going to click them together, right sides together. And you're going to sew together here along the one shorter side. And then you'll press the seam allowance open and then top stitch along both sides of the seam uh, with about one eighth of an inch uh, seam allowance away from that seam. Okay, so the gusset pieces are sewn together, seam allowance is pressed and top stitched along both sides. I'm going to just set this aside for now. Now we're going to install our interior zipper pocket. So just grab the remaining pieces, except uh, obviously not the flap handle, but uh, your, your remaining lining panel, your two zipper pocket lining pieces and your zipper pocket facing piece. So I'm going to set these aside just for a minute and I'm going to take my zipper pocket facing piece and I'm going to use my uh, my zipper template. I need a pen here. Okay, so for this bag I'm installing an 8 inch zip. So I'm just going to use my template to draw my box. So you want to draw a box on the wrong side that is 8 inches wide by 3 eighths of an inch high. If you're using a, a, a thicker zip, like a 4.5 or a 5, then you'll want to make this box a bit taller. You'll want to make it uh, half an inch high as opposed to 3 eighths of an inch high. All right, so we're going to pin this, and now I've I forget um, where I said to pin it. Just don't want to give different advice. Okay, so two inches from the top edge, which is what I guessed. All right, so just make sure that it's centered in the middle and you want two inches of space here at the top. And then just pin, there's actually not even a sharp end whatsoever on this pin. I think I need to add pins to my sewing supply list, my shopping list. Okay, so, all right, so this is pinned in place. I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm going to follow these lines that I drew and I'm going to sew uh, this rectangle shape. Um, I like to keep my needle in the down position so that when I'm uh, rotating at the corners, I just lift my foot and I can rotate and it just makes nice sharp corners um, for your rectangle, uh, your zipper opening. Okay, so I've sewn the uh, rectangle opening for my zipper and uh, what I'm going to do now is draw a line through the center 
but I'm not going to draw it all the way across. I just I stop and start about half an inch from each end and then I draw a diagonal line from that center line to each of the four corners and these are just uh, cutting lines so I usually use my rotary cutter here which I know is brave but this is what I do so I cut the center line and then I cut the four diagonal lines and when you're cutting these diagonal lines you really want to try to get as close as you can to the corner without cutting any of the stitching and this will give you a really nice uh, opening for your zipper. You need a really sharp pair of scissors to do this. If you use a dull pair uh, you're going to find it really challenging. Okay, so I'm going to pause here and I'm going to bring my ironing pad over so that I can uh, show you how to press the, the zipper facing to the wrong side. Now, when I'm doing this part, um, I find it really helpful to roll the seams between your fingertips. So I just kind of dampen them a bit and then I just, I just roll them until I can see a bit of the stitching. So I do this a little bit at a time and you're sort of finger pressing the seam to kind of get it started so I do a bit at a time and press so I do the two longer edges at the top and bottom first and then I do the same for the top edge. I don't like to rush this part. It's better if you just take your time and do a good job. Usually when I've done the top and the bottom, I'll turn it over and then I press again from the wrong side. Now if you have a little bit of puckering at the corners here, it means that you either did not uh, cut close enough to the corners, but sometimes I can sort of cheat and if I just tug a little bit and then press, um, it kind of makes those uh, those puckers go away. Okay, so this part is done. And uh, we're now going to uh, prepare the zipper pocket lining pieces. So first what I'd like to do is press the bottom edge. So you're going to, you're going to fold these up. So wrong sides together about three-eighths to half an inch. It doesn't have to be exactly a certain amount as long as you're pressing both of them the same amount. So if you decide to turn them over half an inch, do both of them that way. take this out of the way and now what I would like you to do is on one of the lining pieces only so don't do this for both just for the one you're going to trim away one inch from the top edge I'm just gonna change my focus here so you can see a little bit better Oh, that didn't really help. It's my shiny metal ruler. All right, so I'm going to trim away one inch at the top, turn this over, and then you're going to take your zipper 
and you're going to place the top edge of your zipper um, aligned with the top edge that you just cut from this uh, pocket lining piece and pin it in place. Um, I like to put my pull um, to the right in this step. Oi, I need new pins. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew the zipper to this pocket lining piece along this top edge with one quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so the uh, zipper is sewn to the lining piece. Now you just need to press the lining piece away from your zipper. So here my zipper is actually wrong side facing up. Okay, and if I turn it over like this, my zipper is right side facing up, my lining piece is wrong side facing up. So I'm going to do the same now, and I'm going to attach the other top edge of the zipper, and I'm going to attach it to this lining piece. And then I'll press it away exactly like I did this first piece. Okay, so I'm going to go sew this in place again with one quarter inch seam allowance along the top edge. Okay, so I have two my two lining pieces attached to my zipper. Now you may be wondering, has her zipper color changed? The answer is yes, it has changed. And the reason for that is because I realized as I was importing my clips that I was doing what I'm going to call reverse recording and I was pausing the video when I was trying when I was supposed to be recording and I was filming when I was not supposed to be filming. Anyways, I've recut all my pieces and re-sewn everything to my zipper. I have the shorter piece here, the taller piece here, and my zipper is right side facing up. Then you're going to take your lining panel with the rectangle opening and you're going to pin this in place. Now, if you prefer, you can glue uh, or use double-sided tape in this step instead of pinning. I usually pin at both ends and then I'm going to uh, sew with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around my rectangle and what I like to do is sometimes just ad adjust the position of everything so that my zipper is perfectly centered in the rectangle opening. Okay so my zipper is attached. I'm going to flip this lining panel over and I'm going to bring this top folded edge down to meet the second folded edge at the bottom and I'm just going to clip these and what I'm also going to do very quickly is I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm just going to press this uh, upwards to make sure that my lining pieces are outside of my they're away from my zipper so they don't get caught in my zipper so I'm just going to do that quickly Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my machine. I like to sew in this this fit with the lining panel facing up, and I'm just going to flip it over like so, and then I'm going to sew along both sides. And you start at the top, you back stitch, you try to sew as close as you can uh, to your stitching here from your rectangle uh, your rectangle box uh, top stitching. You're going to sew all the way down to the bottom and then when you get to the bottom you back stitch again and you do that on both sides. Okay so um, I've sewn both sides. I'm just going to trim away a bit of this seam allowance but I'm not going to trim my zipper at all. And then before we attach the lining panels to the lining gusset, uh, you'll want to open this zipper all the way because this is where you're going to turn your bag right side out. 
Now to attach, and I've already attached uh, my previous lining panel here. Um, when you pin these together, you're going to do exactly as you did for the exterior. You're going to uh, start by pinning your center bottom marks. So you should have made a center mark at the bottom of both of these panels. Of course, your lining panel already has a center mark because uh, it's the this middle um, the the middle line of stitching uh, from when you divided your slip pockets. And so when you're pin when you're uh, clipping these together, you start at the bottom center marks, and then you clip at the top corners, and then you clip everything in between. Um, when you're sewing this, do not um, you, you're going to need to change your seam allowance a bit. So you start with three eighths of an inch at the top corner, and as you're sewing down the side, you increase your seam allowance to half an inch or five eighths of an inch. I think I did half an inch along the side, and then five eighths of an inch along the bottom, and then half an inch here. And then as I'm moving up to the top corner here, I return to three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you're going to do this and attach both of your panels your zipper pocket panel and your slip pocket panel. You're going to do that and then you're going to trim your seam allowance. Now this is the end of video four. In video five we're going to uh, do our final assembly and we're going to sew up our top handle and install it in the flap of our bag.